As with every American, I was sick by the sight of George Floyd being murdered right before our eyes. However, is the response to Mr. Floyd's death truly about seeking justice and racial harmony? It's time for some straight talk, Rockwall County. I'm Bunker Bob Steinhagen, and this is The Bunker Bob Show. Like so many Americans, I have been incredibly troubled by what I witnessed on TV right here in Rockwall County as Black Lives Matter movement is pushing an agenda that leaves many of us scratching our heads, dutifully searching for the right set of words or symbolic gestures that will finally put an end to mounting hatred that's spewing forth toward those who dare question the integrity of their cause. I agree with Ben Shapiro, who argues that the phrase Black Lives Matter should be relatively non-controversial because the implications of the phrase should not be objectionable. The implication being that there are a bunch of people who think they don't. Shapiro highlighted the fact that we generally don't uh, chant uncontroversial things. We don't go out and chant that the sky is blue, that people uh, take to the street and chant that we love children. We don't chant uncontroversial things. That's why people will come out and say all lives matter, not because they think that black lives matter less, but because they're saying, yes, we agree, black lives do matter as much as every other life matters. However, the Black Lives Matter movement is demanding that everyone acknowledge that there exists a proliferation of systemic racism in the United States. That begs the question, and how is racism then defined? So I looked up the term, and here's how Webster's defines the term uh, ra uh, racist, racism. A belief or doctrine that inherent differences among the various human racial groups determine cultural or individual achievement, usually involving the idea that one's own race is superior and has the right to dominate others, or that a particular racial group is inferior to others. Another version, another part of that is that a policy system of government, et cetera, based upon or fostering such a doctrine of uh, such a doctrine, discrimination. Another one is hatred or intolerance of another race or other races. Well, you see, for something to be construed as systematic, considered systematic, there has to be laws in place uh, in general or, or a general system that can objectively be acknowledged and identified. The Jim Crow South, where separate but equal law of the land is an example of systemic racism. In 2015, self-described liberal David Rubin invited Larry Elder to be a guest on his show, uh, the, David, the Dave Rubin Show. Now, I'm going to show you a short segment from that show that challenges the notion of, black lives, of the Black Lives Matter mantra. So watch this. You wouldn't not acknowledge that there are some systemic issues. Give, give me an example. G tell me what you think the most systemic racist issue is. What is it? Well, I would say that because black people in most cases, in many cases, were descendants of slaves, that racism as, a, as an institution, that it just, a certain amount of it just exists. 2015? I, it, that give, give me the most blatant racist example you can come up with right now. Um, I think you could probably find evidence that in general, cops are, that, that cops are more willing to shoot if the uh, perpetrator is black What's your data than for, white. What's your basis for saying that? L last year... The, well, look, I know a lot of people would say, look what's going on in Chicago. I, I, right? I know what they would say. Yeah. I'm talking about what the facts are. 965 people were shot by cops last, uh, last year and killed. 4% of them were white cops shooting unarmed blacks. In, in Chicago in 2011, 21 people were shot and killed by cops. Uh, in 2015, there were seven. Uh, in Chicago, which is a third black, a third white, and a third Hispanic, 70% of the homicides are black on black. Uh, about 40 per month, almost 500 uh, in the year, 
per year, last year in Chicago, and 75% of them are unsolved. Where is the Black Lives Matter on that? The idea that a racist white cop uh, and shooting unarmed black people is a peril to black people is BS. It's yeah. complete and total BS. And, and the reason for these so-called activists saying this is the assumption that racism remains a major problem in America. The media, CNN, especially MSNBC, runs down whenever a black cop shoots somebody, uh, and, it, and it's a, some, some march on Washington. It's ridiculous. Uh, black people, half the homicides in this country are committed by and against black people. Last year, there were 14,000 homicides, I'm not talking about suicides, I'm talking about homicides. Mm -hmm. Um, half of them were black, 96% of them black on black of that 7,000. Where's the black, black Lives Matter people on that? So that, there's where you would say that this is purely because of social justice. This Pure, is purely, purely because, because of, they want ultimately for people to be angry enough to just keep voting Democrat. That's right. That, and that and where's, where's the evidence of a lack of social justice? When a black... Uh, suspect is killed by, by a cop, believe me, the media is on it, people are watching it, uh, and, uh, and justice will, will, for the most part, occur. In Baltimore, where Freddie Gray was killed, uh, Freddie Gray died in a van, I shouldn't say was killed, yeah. died in a van. Yeah. You have a city that's 45% uh, black, uh, city council is 100% Democrat. The majority of city council is black. The top cop at the time was, was black. The number two cop was black. The majority of the command staff is black. The, the mayor is black. Uh, the AG is black. Uh, and yet here we are talking about racism. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Yeah. It's absurd. So it's funny. I find myself caught in between this a little bit as a liberal where I want to always try to defend the other. So in this case, the other being black people, I, I'm always sympathetic to that. And that, uh, yeah, yeah, and at the same time, I hear you laying out a pretty solid well, case. Well, these are just the facts. I'll tell you something else, too. There was just a study, um, uh, University of Washington, uh, and it turns out cops were more reluctant, more hesitant to pull the trigger against a black, black suspect than a white suspect. Uh, probably because of the fear of being accused of racially profiling and the fear that the civil rights establishment was going to come down on him. So if anything, uh, whites are more likely to be shot by a cop under, under certain circumstances than a, than, a, uh, than a black person. And in the last 30 or 40 years, the number of percentage of suspects killed by cops who are black has declined 75 percent. However, the percentage of whites killed by cops has flatlined. Yeah. And so, if anything, people are more concerned about shooting black people for fear that they're going to be called racist. And almost all, every one of these incidents, whether it's Eric Gardner in, in New York, who died because he was selling Lucy's and re resisted arrest, whether it's Tamir Rice in Cleveland, who was twirling around the gun, whether it's Michael Brown in Ferguson, uh, who had just uh, committed a ar strong arm robbery, almost every one of these incidents involves somebody resisting arrest. Why don't you just do what the police tell you? My dad said, when I get pulled over, have my hand at 10 o'clock, have my hand at 2 o'clock, say yes, sir, say no, sir, make sure my paperwork is in order, and if I feel the cop is uh, mistreating me, get a badge number and deal with it later on. If Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and Obama and the whole group of them told black people to do that, we'd have a lot fewer of these things uh, to deal with in the first place. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm hearing a lot of what you're saying here. So as a black conservative, then, who now you've you've laid out your case there, but you haven't laid out yours. I so, asked I asked you to name the most important uh, example of racism, and you gave white cops going after black people, and I and I told you gave you the facts for that. So that's nonsense. So what, you must have something else. What else is it? If you think racism well, remains a problem in America, give it to well, me. Well, I think it remains a problem. Give it to I, it's me. Not, it's give it not, to me. It may not be systemic in that we have. It's not like you're not being hired because you're black, there's no systemic reason, you know, legal reason that that exists, that kind of thing. But I think that racism as a general uh, I need some, theory I need exists. Some, I need some specifics. You gave me the white cop thing. What else? Give me another example where you think is a problem. Well, well, uh, as a black conservative, tell me, how do no, no, you, you, how do you, you get people to come around? You're, you're the one who yeah. made the assertion that you yeah. think racism remains a major problem in America. I asked you to give me an example. You gave me white cops going after blacks. I, as, as far as I'm concerned, you didn't hold it up very well. What's the other argument you have? What, what, what's the other thing? Well, I don't know that it's systemic in that, in the sort of macro sense. I'm not, I'm not I, mad. I just, yeah, I just no, want to no, no. know what, what it is you're, you're talking no, about. No, no, so I, can, that, that's we, we exactly what, that's, yeah. well, believe me, that's 100% so, what so I wanted to, what, what to have you What is it? Blacks here. are not getting into school? BS, that we have a race, we have affirmative action. So a black person with, a, with an SAT and a GPA uh, of, of X will, will get into a school faster and easier than a white person with an SAT uh, or a GPA of X. And if going to, going to school is a route to the middle class, you can make an argument that blacks have an easier route to, middle, to the middle class. If you're talking about, uh, black, uh, about poverty, um, 
the poorer you are, the more accessible loans and grants are for you. Uh, the, 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 the problem, the, the biggest burden that black people have, in my opinion, again, is the percentage of blacks, 75 percent of them, that are raised without fathers. Uh, and that has every other social negative consequence connected to it. Crime, uh, not being uh, able to compete economically in the country, being more likely to be arrested, that's the number one problem facing the black community. And when I hear people tell me about systemic racism or unconscious racism, I always say, give me an example, and almost nobody can do it. Yeah, Larry Elder argued use the point that the impetus behind the Black Lives Matter movement has nothing to do with bringing about justice or eradicating racism. It's about perpetuating a left-wing political agenda driven by Democrats. If you don't believe me, I've included a link to a YouTube video entitled Bait and Switch, where a YouTuber has a show just like mine, who also happens to be black, and it takes you to the Black Lives Matter website and shows you when you select a button to make a contribution to Black Lives Matter, you get redirected to a political action committee called Act Blue. So instead of making a contribution to, a per, uh, to perpetuate racial equality and justice for all, those dollars go directly to Democrat candidates. Here's where most of the money goes. Alan West said, there's nothing on this green earth that, that a liberal progressive fears more than a black American who wants a better life and a smaller uh, government. Now, going to Andrew Breitbart, he started the Huffington Post, a bastion of the left uh, designed to take out Republicans at every level. Ironically, Breitbart converted to become one of the most prolific voices of conservatism, creating Breitbart News, a bastion of the right that's designed to provide an alternative view from what one hears on the mainstream media. Breitbart focused on, uh, on, on uh, David Mamet's latest book. Uh, it is entitled uh, The Secret Knowledge. He used it as a guide to unpack how basically the left is trying to dismantle uh, our culture. Like Breitbart, Mamet uh, converted uh, from a left-wing point of view to a far-right conservative after being c exposed to alternative points of view that he had never come in contact with. You see, Mamet asserts that most on the left uh, have never been have never been exposed, and they've simply been indoctrinated as a result of culti cultish isolation. Only one side of political thought and philosophy are posited where they live. And it, it, it's like a cult. It, it, as with any cult, it's imperative to ensure that the alternative points of view uh, does not come into the cult. Anyone who attempts to infiltrate the cult through a back door or challenge the philosophy of the cult with facts must be shunned by, uh, by everyone. Uh, it's why conservatives like Rush Limbaugh so vehement, are so vehemently demonized by the left. Limbaugh and other conservatives like yours truly uh, are, are, are basically lambasted by the left because people hope that others will be less likely to open their minds and consider an alternative point of view. Uh, when, when you listen to, to Rush Limbaugh, you will, you will literally hear uh, individuals coming on the show over and over again saying, I've always thought that, that you were the great Satan, and everyone asserted that, that you were this awful person, that you were a racist, on and on and on. But people, when they start listening, start realizing that uh, facts do make our kind of common sense. That's, that's when I came to a growing reality that the left is not necessarily produce a product of strong ideology, uh, or based upon facts of evidence, but simply the result of emotion-laden philosophy that does not challenge, is never challenged by facts. As John Adams said, facts are stubborn things, but, soon, but, but few seem willing to embrace them. The reason so many people misunderstand so many issues is not that these issues are so complex, but that people do not want a factual or analytical explanation that leaves them emotionally in unsatisfied. Like Breitbart and Mamet, Soul 2 came from a leftist ideology. When asked what was the tipping point for him to abandon the left, Soul replied simply, facts. Two of the most lauded beacons of conservative thinking, Frederick, Friedrich Hayek and Milton Freeman were also self-described socialist Marxists, and they converted too because of facts.
However, actions of those who carry the banner of what can only be described as a cult-like following of Black Lives Matter prove that black lives don't really matter. Protests have resulted in destruction of black-owned businesses by black, pro by, by black protesters uh, because not all black lives really seem to matter. The insane effort to defund the police department that will leave so many blacks helpless and defenseless against those who want to do them harm is all because only some black lives matter to this movement. If you're a conservative and, uh, and, 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 and black, to them, your life doesn't matter because, since you are branded as an Uncle Tom. It's interesting that Lieutenant Colonel Alan West was actually, has actually been labeled a racist. That's why he said, when tolerance becomes a one-way street, it leads to cultural suicide. More importantly, if, if you are unborn and black, uh, more worthless your life cannot be the, to the so-called liberators of justice, since one of the chief financial contributors to BLM's propaganda machine just so happens to be Planned Parenthood, the organizational responsible for the systematic murder of more innocent black lives than all others combined. It seems as though the only time a black life really matters is when a life is taken at the hand of police officers because there's no protest, no outrage when a black young man kills another black young man on the streets of Chicago, which experienced its highest murder rate for a weekend in the city's history just two weeks ago where 90% of those murdered were at the hands of one black man to another. This hasn't stopped the proliferation of Black Lives Matter movement from infiltrating the Rockwall community. Just two weeks ago, a hastily organized protest was created through social media by a young man named Christian Giadolor. At the rally, Giadolor said the following, and I quote, Rockwall likes to act like black lives don't matter. Rockwall likes to silence the voice of marginalized identities. Well, guess what? they're going to hear us today. How do you feel about that, Rockwall? Is there any semblance of truth in that statement, in that gastronomical statement? Despite the fact that no one who spoke on behalf of Black Lives Matter movement provided a scintilla of evidence to demonstrate that the Rockwall County Sheriff's Department, the city of Rockwall, or any local police department in Rockwall County has systematic ra racism at any level. According to the Rockwall Hilarious Banner, the protest leader specifically chided Superintendent John Villarreal for not attending, commenting that the atmosphere in Rockwall ISD schools has made many feel like they can be a black athlete, football star, and track champion, but not a successful black student and in intellectual. When I talk about how leftists focus on emotion and not facts, the reality of this young man's statement falls apart completely. Here is Mr. Giadolor's picture with Dr. John Villarreal honoring the young man for having been awarded a presidential medal, not for athletic achievements on the football field or in track, but his intellectual pursuits and leadership. Mr. Giadolor is attending Stanford University despite all the systematic racism that has kept this young man from achieving all to his potential. Thomas Sowell posted that too many people today act as if no one can honestly disagree with them. If you have a difference of opinion with them, you are considered to be not merely in error but in sin. You are a racist, a homophobe, or whatever the villain of the day happens to be. So should it come as, so it should come as no surprise that Mr. Gayadolor posted this on his Facebook page, urging everyone at the rally to vote these people out of office because they did not attend the rally. Now, Council Member Trace Johannesson commended, excuse me, the demonstrators for exercising their First Amendment rights peacefully, but he was frustrated that the inv invitation to speak came the same day as the event. Johansson went on to say, I have a full-time job. I hadn't even seen the email invitation yet, and even if I had, I already had a prior commitment in another county that kept me out until 8.30. And he concluded, 
that he was surprised to learn that Gia Delor had called him and other non-attendees out by name, and he had encouraged those in attendance to vote them out whenever possible, especially since he said he didn't know of the protest until he checked his mail that evening and responded to Gia Delor. You know, Mr. Johannesson served his country honorably in the United States Marines, taking time off from Texas A&M University to fight for the freedom of Mr. Guillaume is exercising to propagate lies and misinformation. Mr. Mr. Johansson is is commending them for their right to uh, to protest peacefully. He fought for that. Mr. Guillaume wants to lie about them. That's that is that's absolutely atrocious. Alan West, I think, said it best. I'm tired of liberals dividing this country up into little groups, setting them up upon each other, breeding spite and envy, and then having the nerve to accuse conservatives of hatred. But this guy, Alan West, Colonel Alan West, is running for state party chairman of the Republican Party right here in Texas. How much support do you think Black Lives Matter will be giving Mr. West? My guess is not much. Mr. Gayadolor, the entire Black Lives Movement is driven totally by emotion-laden propaganda, absent facts. When Mr. Soul says, emotions neither prove nor disprove facts. There was a time when any rational adult understood this, but years of dumbed-down education and emphasis on how people feel have left too many people unable to see through this media gimmick. And it is a gimmick. Larry Elder interviewed the then president of the NAACP, Kwasi Nfumi, and asked him the simple question between the presence of white racism and the absence of black fathers, which poses a bigger threat to the black community. And he did not, and, and Nfumi did not hesitate. He said, It is the absence of black fathers. This is a picture taken at City Hall when I was mayor, right after I gave Mr. Guillaume a proclamation. He's a citizen of McLennan Chisholm. By the city, after he had been awarded the Presidential Medal. This is his mom and dad, very proud parents, and and, uh, the operative word being parents. He has two Larry, Larry Elder preaches the mantra the, that fatherless homes, which is where we see uh, persons, regardless of race, five times more likely to commit a crime, nine times more likely to drop out of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in jail. Mr. Gaylor's success is likely due to the fact that he had a father who guided him and loved him well. The bigger problem that I am seeing right now here in Rockwall County with white protesters who are attempting to amend uh, racial guilt by people who have never done anything wrong. Now, here's a video taken uh, during the protest uh, at the Rockwall Harbor where they essentially vow to spread the gospel of anti-racism among their friends, neighbors, and colleagues, which is absolutely absurd. Did any of these people do anything racist? Have, have, the, have they been participating in that? So much of the media today is built on implication that if you are not being this performative, if you're not doing this performative thing today, that because you don't care about black lives, because you don't, you don't care about black lives. If you don't say black lives matter today because you're busy or because you think it's perfectly obvious that black lives matter and don't tend to say perfectly obvious things as a matter of course, then that means you don't think that black lives matter. So if you don't spend, so if I don't spend my day saying rape is bad, then I must think rape is good. It's an absurd contention propagated by movement, by a movement that is driven by the political left, not by those who actually care about seeing justice prevail. The sort of performative woke virtue signaling from white people who are taking on sins that were not theirs so as to take the sins on among a broader group of people who are not them. Meaning that when you see a performative white woke liberal doing the, 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 the taking the, 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 
taking on the sins of their ancestors. What they're really saying is, I'm not... I'm not taking the sins of my ancestors, but all the other white people who aren't here with me bending a knee, arm in arm, in solidarity with the victims of systemic racism, are taking on the sins of my ancestors. That's what they really mean. Coming up this, uh, this, this week, uh, on, on the 19th, they're going to have another Black Lives Matter protest at a park. And I guarantee there's going to be a, a, a flurry of of whites who are going to come to try and demonstrate that that they are not racist. You, you know, the best way to prove that you're not a racist is just not be a racist. You, the problem is you cannot disprove a negative, uh, and that's the and that is what the the Black Lives Matter. Their approach is to label anyone who doesn't fall in place with them a racist. Mr. Gidelor named everybody who didn't show up, even though everybody got an invitation on the day of that they were all racist. He called his school superintendent a racist because he didn't show up. It's gotten out of hand. You know, when, when uh, five... Uh, uniformed police officers who were protecting Black Lives Matter protesters were murdered, summarily murdered on the streets of Dallas a few years ago. Where was Mr. Gidelor? Where was the Black Lives Matter? Because I was at Mike Smith's funeral. He attended Watermark. I was at his funeral. I didn't see Black Lives Matter there. So Black Lives Matter is going to have another protest. Maybe it's time that we citizens, that we have a celebration, a celebration of our, of our men in uniform, the guys who wear the badge. I recognize, just like everyone else does, that there are bad cops in everywhere, just like there are bad cooks everywhere. There's, there's, there, there's bad teachers. There's bad everything everywhere. But that doesn't mean it's a systemic problem. I'm hoping and praying that someone will out there will come up with the idea, who's better at social media than I am, and, and say, you know what? Let's have a celebration of, of our police, of the Rockwall County Sheriff, the, the Rockwall City Police Department, Roy City, Fate, Heath. Don't they need to hear that that their life matters too, that all lives matter. I have no doubt in my mind that, uh, that, that I'm going to be labeled a racist which, because, of, because of what I've said today. And, and, and I'm in good company. I'm in good company because uh, we, I've, I've got Alan West uh, alongside me. It's interesting, when, uh, when someone accused him of being a racist, it was somebody, he, he was accused of being a racist because he identified someone as being Muslim. And I, 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 I told him what, what's interesting about that is I was also accused of racism by a, by a pasty white guy named William Slick Willie Dahl, who, who called me a racist because I identified that he's Hindu. And unfortunately, uh, that has nothing to do with race. So facts don't mean much to the Black Lives Matter folks. They don't mean much to, to, to a lot of, of people, but they do mean a lot to conservatives. They do mean a lot to me, and that's what this show is about. I, I want to end with a, a quote by George Orwell. The further a society drifts from truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. And I am proud to be hated by the left in Rockwall County. And I will continue to do so, so long as uh, God gives me, uh, gives me breath. So I appreciate uh, your time today and love to hear from you what, you're, what your thinking is. But more than anything, let's all remember, those who wear the badge are putting their lives on the line for everyone because they believe, most all of them, I think, most all of them believe that all lives do matter. So I look forward uh, to seeing you, and I'm going to try to do a, a show on Friday. I may have uh, the Iron Lady with me, uh, Adrian Balkum, to talk about uh, what's going on uh, in the city of McLennan Chisholm. So I uh, hope you'll tune in then. Until then, I hope you have a great day. 
Blessings until then. Bye-bye now.